Welcome back to another quick tip from Mac Photography. Uh, in this video I will show you how to reduce the noise and foreground areas of your astrophotography. Due to the camera's lack of dynamic range, the 6D is pretty good but we still get these massive shadow areas where there's a lot of noise versus in the lighter areas. This is a series of photos shot down in Lake Canary in Hokitika. Uh, Amy West, we've got the Milky Way, and the full time lapse it actually sets down below the horizon. But for this tutorial, I'm only going to use 17 photos. Uh, anywhere upwards of 10 will effectively reduce the noise, as you will see. Uh, but the more photos you have, the better for signal to noise ratio. I'm just going to make a few quick adjustments before we go ahead. So get the white balance looking a bit better. Lift up the exposure a bit, add a bit of clarity, uh, vibrance and saturation. So it's brought out a lot of the natural sky colours quite nicely. I'm just going to sync all these settings. Now I'm not going to play anything else, no noise reduction, no lens, lens profiles or anything like that as we do not need them until later. Just going to select all those files and then open as layers in Photoshop. Alright, so now that we're loaded into Photoshop, I'm going to pick a base layer. Probably going to go with the second one here, Command J to duplicate that. And send that right to the top. I'll hide that layer and then rename that base. Milky Way. Now this will be quite processor intensive, so select all of your files. Right click, convert to smart object. And just wait a while for that to convert. Alright, so now that we've got a smart object there, you can't see anything different apart from my base layer. All we need to do is go into Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, and we're going to pick Median. And what this does is it averages out all the pixels um, and picks the ones that have got multiple values of the same and keeps those ones. And anything that is different will fade out or eliminate. But since we've got a sequence of photos, where say the stars are slightly moving, there will be a slight blur where the stars go. But hopefully in the foreground here, because nothing has really moved, apart from shadows and reflections, we should get a nice smooth result. There you have it. Now if I create a mask, about halfway. Select that. Now you can see what's going on with the stars. If we go down, you can see a massive improvement on that grain. Now we can go in and mask in the um, the base layer here to keep the sky. Now if I was going to use a gradient, it does an alright job, but you can see here, still see the noise from the original photo going to a noise-free blend. So instead of doing that, go select color range, uh, hold down shift, and that will get majority of that area. Just the fuzziness. Now, we're not too worried about losing up down here because we can mask that in relatively easy. Command Shift I to invert selection and then mask. And I'll we'll keep that mask as it is, group that fold that photo, create another mask, and just brush out the parts that we don't need. 
Just make sure your brush is set to 100 opacity. You see that grain magically disappear. Let me just see where my mask is going. Let's have a look at this mask. If I command click on that, it's going to select that mask. Then I can delete all of that area. It's looking pretty good to me. Just want to make sure that none of those pixels are showing in this foreground. All right, so there we have it. Now, now that we've got this mask on this area, which I can delete up here. I can now go ahead and actually edit just the sky to how I want it. Reduce the brightness in that core of the Milky Way. That's looking pretty nice. Huge difference in, um, in the edit. Now for final edit, because um, this is going to make a massive Photoshop file, we'll just rasterize that layer. Save that file, and that should open up in Lightroom. There we go. So now we can apply some more edits to this, because uh, we've got these um, the vignetting in the corners there. This was shot at f4. If I had shot at f2.8, the vignetting would have been a lot worse. So what we can do, I'll just start off with a little bit more clarity. Touch more vibrance. Bring the saturation. Quite liking the greens and the blues in this shot. If we go down, well, I'm not going to apply a lens profile on this one because the lens profile will not work on a TIFF or a Photoshop file, or at least not for the Sam Yangs anyway. As you can see, it only comes up with a limited list. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. The distortion on this lens uh, can be quite bad, but as this is an, um, on a lake, we can put the horizon of the shoreline there. I'm not too bothered, so I'm just going to straighten that horizon. It's pretty good as it is. And then apply a little bit of um, distortion correction in the crop that we're in. So it's looking pretty good. We'll go down to uh, highlight priority. Now, if we play with this, it's still going to make it look a bit odd. So instead of lifting those, Just going to make it a little bit more uniform and just reduce the overall exposure down here. Now I've got one more trick up my sleeve um, which is using the tone curve. Now I've got a little bit of a demonstration here. So noise in your photograph is, say these are all pixels of different noise levels, so you've got the blacks up to the lights and they're all scattered throughout your image. Now if you were to lift the shadows with the curves function, you're essentially lifting up the darkest parts of your, your photo to match the darker grays. And so essentially what happens there is it does help with your noise reduction, especially in your really dark areas. 
And I've got a preset here that I've already made, which lifts up those shadows uh, as you can see them. It's probably a little bit too much, so let's reduce them down a little bit more. And we can see before, after. And that pretty much covers this shot. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, hopefully you found, found this tutorial useful. Please comment if you've got any questions or whatever. And thank you for watching.